Controversy sparked over adult material in Kent State's curriculum being called porn by legislators. An in-person early voting in Ohio has begun and the lines have been out of many boards of election buildings. If you are voting through the mail, what dates you need to know. And months into the COVID-19 pandemic, the virus is spreading from densely populated cities to rural areas in Ohio. How this is affecting hospitalizations across the state. And Hurricane Delta landed in Mexico early this morning as the country prepares for more damage. All of this and more as TV2 News starts right now. This is TV2 News. Good evening, Portage County. Thank you for being with us tonight. An interview you'll only see on TV2 News. We spoke with one of Ohio representatives that raised concerns with material taught in a Kent State course. That's where we'll begin. I'm Chris Abreu. And I'm Shane Troiano. Two Ohio legislators are fighting Kent State for, quote, awarding college credit for studying porn. Our Jenna Gobrecht has more on this controversial story. Jenna? That is right, guys. Ohio State Representatives Reggie Stolson and Don Jones wrote a letter to Kent State President Todd Dykin claiming the story was assigning adult-oriented material to students under the age of 18. The reps were contacted by the parents of a 17-year-old high school student taking College Credit Plus classes through a Kent State branch campus. The student was assigned to read a book entitled Anime from Akira to Howl's Moving Castle, Experiencing Contemporary Japanese Anime. He expressed concerns to his professor about the book's content, saying, in part, the book goes against my moral obligations, and I feel very, very uncomfortable reading this kind of material. The professor denied the student's request for an alternative assignment, saying this is the text we're using. There is no alternative. Pornography is one thing. Um, there's a di difference between pornography and violent sexual pornography. This pornography is of an extreme twisted, violent nature, and the text that goes along with it is just as bad. The stories of raping and torturing high school girls and many other acts. The student's parents contacted Representative Stoltzfus and Jones, who questioned why the book is being offered to students who aren't legal adults. Stoltzfus says that no, he does not object to the book's publication, but it, he is concerned that it is part of the curriculum at Kent State, a taxpayer-funded university. I don't think any book should be banned. Um, if, if you as an adult want to go get this book and read it, um, I think that's quite, quite all right. If a private institution that receives no public funding whatsoever wants to teach this book, um, I think they have a right to do that. But when we're talking about state taxpayer dollars yeah. being used for these institutions, I have an issue with that. The university released a statement yesterday saying faculty have academic freedom to communicate ideas for discussion and learning to fulfill the course objectives. All students in the College Credit Plus program dealing with mature content must sign a waiver prior to enrolling in the course. Later in the statement, the university says, quote, to engage students in the importance, power, and beauty of writing, faculty offers many sections with themes they believe will be interesting to college-age students who are free to choose any section they see fit. If, if they don't want to take this off their shelf, then, you know, they're going to force my hand as a representative. Um, I, I told him I'm going to, I'm going to purchase books for every member of the General Assembly, and we're going to look at this book. They're going to decide, does this, does this institution deserve to get $150 million of state taxpayer dollars every year? Stoltzfus describes pictures in the book showing anime characters performing sexual acts as extreme, twisted, and violent in nature. They are using this um, and teaching this under the guise of education, and they get a free pass. So why do we have to have extreme, violent sexual pornography involved in college writing one? Stoltzfus said he plans to take the issue to the Ohio General Assembly in hopes of turning out new legislation regarding the matter. TV2 will continue to update you as new developments come in. For TV2 News in Franklin Hall Studio, I'm Jenna Gobrecht. Thank you for that report, Jenna. A former probation officer in Ohio was found guilty yesterday of raping and sexually assaulting two women back in the summer of 2017. Three women testified against him, and two of them said that 51-year-old Keith Cooper was their parole officer during the assault. 
Cooper will remain in Portage County Jail while he awaits sentencing. And COVID-19 is spreading to more rural areas from the larger cities in Ohio. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine mentioned in a briefing on Tuesday that the virus is shifting age groups as well. It initially affected older Ohioans and then shifted to a younger age group and then back to older people recently. As of right now, DeWine said Ohio is seeing the virus most in rural areas and with older age groups. Yesterday was the beginning of in-person early voting in Ohio. As you can see, lines in Portage County were wrapping around the building. Ohio is mailing out millions of absentee ballots as early voting for the presidential election begins. And today, residents should start receiving their ballots. Two million absentee ballots are being sent out in Ohio, which is double the amount in 2016. Be sure to follow all of the necessary steps and check if there are any marks and tears on your ballot before using it. If there are, to contact the Cuyahoga Board of Elections to request a replacement. Hurricane Delta reached land in Mexico earlier today along the northeastern coast. The hurricane toppled trees and cut power on the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. There are not any reports of death or injury as of now. Delta was forecast to spend several hours on the peninsula before it grew significantly larger in the Gulf of Mexico. Good evening, Portage County. And I'm Nathan Welsh with your weather forecast. Currently in Kent, it is 58, though it feels like 71. And we have a dew point at 45, which gives us a humidity at 40%. It's a pretty windy day uh, at 14 mile an hour winds coming from the northwest. We have visibility out to 10 miles. And looking across northeast Ohio, we have temperatures pretty much ranging around the high 50s to around 60. And when we look across the rest of Ohio, we see more lower 50s, all the way down to 47 here in Athens, so very interesting. And looking at tonight's forecast, we have clear skies. It's going to be around 50, although it's just going to pretty much drop throughout the night. And we have, the winds will die down to bring us about three mile an hour winds. Of course, the sun is starting to set earlier and earlier every day, but uh, we have some nice weather for some nice stargazing, so I'll have more information on that after the break. After the break, I'll actually have the seven-day forecast and more. Uh, back to you, Chris. Thank you, Nathan. President Trump's treatment for COVID-19 is much faster than the typical patient and includes new techniques. And President Donald Trump ends all talks of a potential stimulus check, how the election is involved. The Boston Marathon bombing from 2013 is now being brought to the Supreme Court's judgment today by the Department of Justice. I feel like, like her heartbeat is like the same speed as mine. And I think we have this like deep connection, this heart connection in her heart that there's, there's room for me and mom. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. It's a sensory thing. It's a thing with Asperger's. She's really good with Anya. I've seen adults react to my daughter when she has meltdowns, like she's from a different planet. And this little animal just sat next to my child and was just like, you know, it's gonna be cool. She's my superhero. Good job, kitty cat. When we adopted Lucky, we discovered all the wonderful things that make her unique. Lucky's a little bit of a lot of things, but mostly she's pure love. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Oh Our back and forth. It always came back. You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Welcome back. We are just hours away from the vice presidential debate, where Vice President Mike Pence and Senator Kamala Harris will face off for the first time. But a lot of the attention is going to the threat of the coronavirus at the debate, both rhetorically and physically. 
Camila Bernal is in Salt Lake City, Utah with a preview. It's the one and only vice presidential debate of 2020. We stand with President Donald Trump. Vice President Mike Pence is expected to continue the attack on liberal ideas and defend the Trump administration. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris would set America on a path of socialism and decline, and we're not going to let it happen. All of us will stand together for a better future. Senator Kamala Harris oh, no, is likely right. focusing right. on what she believes is President Trump's mishandling of the pandemic and attack the VP as the head of the coronavirus task force, which the Biden campaign says has failed to protect President the Donald country. Trump. After President Trump and more than a dozen senior officials at the White House tested positive, and health uh, experts worry that really Pence may have been exposed to the virus. Tradition. Safety must be job one for this debate. Pence physician says he was not in close contact with anyone who tested positive. His team also says he's tested negative several times and have agreed to a number of new safety measures, including plexiglass barriers. The debate will consist of nine 10 minute discussions and it will start with a question. Pence and Harris will each have two minutes to answer and after that they'll have six minutes to debate. In Salt Lake City, Utah, I'm Camila Bernal. Now Jacob Blake was released from the hospital, Netflix is facing criminal charges, and one popular family restaurant is bankrupt. That's right, and our, Nash, our national correspondent Gabby Jonas has more with your National News Minute. For a national news update, Jacob Blake has left Milwaukee Hospital after being repeatedly shot seven times in the back by Kenosha, Wisconsin Police earlier in August. Blake's family said that he posed no threat to the officers during that event and have doubts about receiving justice anytime soon. Attorney Patrick Afardi stated that Blake is in a spinal injury rehabilitation center in Chicago, though declines to tell any more information to the public when he left the hospital and how long he will remain in rehab. Here's what Blake had to say from his hospital bed before being released. It hurts to breathe, it hurts to sleep, it hurts to move from side to side, it hurts to eat. Please, I'm telling you, change our lives out there, we can stick together. Netflix has been indicted by Texas grand jury over lewd depiction of children in its original drama of cuties for partially clothed children under the age of 18. The popular streaming company is facing criminal charges at this time for the series. The series about a young girl raised in a conservative Muslim family is torn by her family roots and wanting to join the desired dance team called The Troop. Netflix defended the film with the following statement. Cuties is a social commentary against the sexualization of young children. This charge is without a merit, and we stand by the film. The nearly 50-year-old popular family restaurant, Ruby Tuesday, filed for bankruptcy protection due to the pandemic earlier today. Before the pandemic started, the restaurant was already struggling. Now with regulations on dining in, Ruby Tuesdays has closed roughly 200 locations, leaving about 300 restaurants left of the casual dine-in restaurant globally. This announcement does not mean goodbye, Ruby Tuesday. CEO of Ruby Tuesday, Sean Letterman, stated. Reporting your national news update from Columbus, Ohio, I'm Gabby Jonas. Thank you, Gabby. President Donald Trump's COVID-19 treatment is similar to most, except it is faster and includes experimental drugs. President Trump's doctors told the public he is on a routine regimen of COVID therapy. He received a dose of a drug that was only tested on 2,000 people in a research trial. The major difference between the president and a typical patient is that he gets everything much sooner. White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows says the president is in good health. The president continues to work. Uh, he's in uh, very good health. Uh, we're, we're pleased with uh, his progress. And uh, I had a briefing last night with Doc Conley late last night. And uh, we'll do so again this morning. A federal appeals court ruled today that President Trump is not allowed to block a New York subpoena for his tax returns. The court did not accept the president's argument regarding his records being overly broad and issued to him in bad faith. The case is most likely going to the Supreme Court, which will have three justices appointed by Trump if Amy Coney Barrett is confirmed, and a 6-3 to three conservative majority.
Hello again, I'm Nathan Welsh with your weather. So looking at our hourly forecast, we have pretty much just temperatures around the 50s pretty much all night and nice clear skies all the way from 9 to 3 a.m. And then we look further in, we're going to get all the way down to 47 around 6 a.m. But once the sun rises and noon comes, we're going to get up to 59 degrees. And by 6 p.m., we're going to get all the way up to 60. Then we have some nice, warm-ish, but sunny fall weather coming up. And if we look at our seven-day forecast, we have, again, some pretty decent sun all the way through until Sunday when we are going to have more showers coming in. However, we have some great temperatures pretty much all week. Again, it's around 70. We're getting just some stellar fall weather. And we have some clear skies tonight. I recommend some stargazing. My astrophotographically inclined brother tells me that Mars is at its closest approach to the Earth, so check that out. Trump announcing a pause on stimulus check talks despite the many families struggling economically during the pandemic. And LeBron James is the featured athlete on this month's Wheaties cereal box, but he is joined by some Northeast Ohio faces. We'll be back in 60 seconds. If you love them enough to drive an hour to cheer them on as they get beat 11 to nothing in the rain, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. Roll that ball, Diane. Woo! You got this. What to expect when you're expecting. Like here? A teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to team-proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. Ready for the Mom, you don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. <laughs> President Donald Trump slams the brakes on stimulus talks. This despite the threat of more worker forelows and layoffs, and as many households are struggling in the COVID-19 stricken economy. John Lawrence reports. Stimulus talks have hit a wall. It's very clear that the president and Mitch McConnell uh, do not put protecting American people as a priority. They make it so plain. One day after leaving the hospital for COVID-19 treatment, President Trump blasted House Speaker Nancy Pelosi on Twitter, adding that he has instructed my representatives to stop negotiating until after the election. It became very clear that Speaker Pelosi would rather have zero than 1.6 trillion, and she was really just playing games and holding things up. Word of the scuttled talks rocked Wall Street. Both the Dow and S&P tumbled Tuesday. There's also concerns from the airline and restaurant industries, which have been struggling during the coronavirus pandemic and fears of the impact of a surge in illness. One such risk is that COVID-19 cases might again rise to levels that more significantly limit economic activity. And it may be a while before a solution is found. It looked like there was a real chance to get to yes. Uh, and the president, for whatever reason, uh, basically said, no, I'm not interested anymore. The speaker has insisted on including things that don't have anything to do with the coronavirus to really bail out Democrat states. And so she's trying to really exploit this situation that our country's in to get stuff that is unrelated. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The Department of Justice held a press conference to announce the indictment of two ISIS members for terrorism. Shafi Elskai and Alexandra Cody are responsible for the deaths of four Americans as well as citizens in Great Britain and Japan. On a, one of the victims was freelance journalism, journalist James Foley. The two men are now in FBI custody. And the Department of Justice took the Boston Marathon bombing case against Jokar Sarnayev to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is asked to review a lower court's opinion which cleared the attacker's death sentence. Zarnayev was one of two brothers to have a part in the 2013 attack that killed three people and injured hundreds of others. And now, your TV2 Sports Report.
cereal box. It is an 85-year-old tradition, and James is the next athlete to be featured, along with students and staff from the I Promise School. They are pictured in a collage on the box, and the cereal will be in stores in the United States within the next several weeks. The company said that they could not be prouder than to picture LeBron James on their cereal box. Good evening, Portage County. I'm Mackenzie Flume, here with all you need to know from the Orlando bubble to Mac football, and that's where we will begin. As we all know, Mac football is returning very soon. Today, Mac Sports announced on Twitter the upcoming 2020 schedule. Maction is set to begin on Wednesday, November 4th. Kent State looks to chase after another winning season, beginning with a home game against Eastern Michigan. Let's take a closer look. Obviously, the Akron game is one everyone is going to look forward to. This season, that game will be on a Tuesday night. Then Kent State travels to Buffalo over Thanksgiving weekend. It'll be a fun matchup to see a winning Flashes team against one of the most successful teams in MAC history. Then the final week of the season against Ohio will be a pivotal matchup that may even decide the MAC East title to see who travels to Detroit on December 18th for the MAC championship. Indians manager Terry Francona made a big announcement today. After missing 48 of the Tribe's 62 games this season, Francona announced that he intends to manage the team next season. Tito said in a statement today that he has progressed well and that he will meet with the team's doctor and medical staff in seven weeks to decide what is best for his future. Indians first base coach Sandy Alomar replaced Francona mid-season. Last night in the NBA bubble, the Lakers added one more win to their series lead. LeBron James told his team they must win and make sure of that by adding two to the score. Again, LeBron James gets space away from Robinson and Butler and downtown adds three. Robinson sets a pick and roll, knocks a long ball down to add three. Butler with the assist. Robinson keeps fighting to keep up with the Lakers in the third, shoots from deep in the Lakers defense keeping tight. Into the fourth, Anthony Davis continues the momentum for the Lakers and adds three. The Lakers went on to win 102 to 96. Yes, the Lakers might have a 3-1 lead, but us Cleveland fans know a 3-1 lead really means nothing. I'm Mackenzie Flume. I'll see you next week, Portage County. Thank you, Mackenzie. And when we come back, it's Instagram's birthday, and the app is letting users reminisce through the years. More on that when we return. And in a time with much political division ahead of the election, two neighbors in Texas are showing that you can have opposing views and still get along. Welcome back, Portage County. Instagram is celebrating its 10th birthday by letting users temporarily switch to logos from its early days. Users can also choose updated redesigns of the current logo, but to access them, users will have to figure out a cryptic tweet Instagram sent out on Tuesday. As the leaves change colors and the days get colder, Many people will begin to take their yearly trips to pumpkin patches and partake in fall activities. That's right, and one local farm relies on their yearly pumpkin festival for most of its business. Ben Pagani went and learned more about how those businesses are preparing safely. Ben? That's right, you too. It's a fun time for traditional fall activities, but in the age of COVID-19, businesses are working to keep both their customers happy and healthy. We don't want as big of crowds to scare people away. 
Linda Dussel relies on her farm's fall festival for income, but wants to make her customers feel safe during the ongoing pandemic. We have been trying to support people through the COVID and to keep things open so that they feel welcome and comfortable. This year we have eliminated our corn maze, our kids maze, and the scary bus. But Dussel Farm has more to protect than its valued customers. This fall is also about preserving the decades-long history her family has here. My husband's family bought the farm around 1950, so they've been here for 70 years about. The kids are excited and the grandparents want to show their grandkids what, you know, what they've done over the years. And, uh, and the parents that have been here, they just, it's tradition. The Kent Board of Health has told businesses to practice social distancing, wash your hands, and wear a face mask. Those non-essential things, um, they need to be taken with extreme caution. Uh, certainly we can't restrict you from going to a pumpkin patch or anything like that. Um, we're not going to have a health department employee out there uh, enforcing you to go home or anything, but um, all those things have to be exercised with, with extreme caution. The sentiment is the same. You, you should still have a restriction on the number of people who are in a business. Maintain social distancing whenever you can. You should continue to not go into large crowds. Patrons seem pleased with the farm's guidelines on protecting customers and still making the festival enjoyable. There's not as many people here as there could be. I like that it's small and it, it's like kind of like homey. They usually use, they usually do like apple cider and stuff like that but this year they haven't because of COVID. Linda is doing her best to make her customers still feel fall magic, and she's happy they're showing up to support her too. That everybody comes and supports us, it, it makes you feel good inside. At Dussel Farm in Kent, Ohio, I'm Ben Pagani reporting. Thank you for that report, Ben. Despite the coronavirus pandemic, thrill lovers may still be able to find a haunted house for them this Halloween. The CDC warned that attending haunted houses and hayrides put Ohioans at a high risk, but many are opening anyway. Some of them include Blood Prison in Mansfield, the Chippewa Lake Slaughterhouse, and the Hickley Buzzard Cove Scream Park. And two neighbors in Texas are showing that people can, in fact, have different political views and can also be the closest of friends. Marn Litton and Tasha Hancock are neighbors in Cedar Park, Texas, and posted a photo on Facebook of them side by side with opposing presidential candidate signs. Litton supports Trump and Hancock supports Biden, and they say it does not get in their way of their bond. They ask their neighbors to show respect and goodwill, and they say the post has gotten a positive reaction. Now, I think that's a really nice gesture, like to be friends with someone with opposing political views, mm -hmm. don't you think? For sure, for sure. I think it's definitely possible, but in other things, yeah. haunted houses. Have you ever gone to any growing up? Did you ever I like them? love haunted houses. I love scary movies, so yeah, mm -hmm. I want to be like immersed in that vibe. So I am definitely going to the pumpkin, pumpkin patch. My birthday is on Saturday, so that's a fun little activity for myself. So mm -hmm. I like I can vaguely remember going to a pumpkin patch a couple times growing up, but those few times I think I really enjoyed them. At least I want to go to more. Now, do you like carving pumpkins? I really enjoy carving pumpkins. Me too. What's your favorite uh, type of pumpkin to carve? Like, what's your favorite face? I don't. I changes every year. Snoopy. That's mine. I like drawing Snoopy. On Snoopy. Yeah. Isn't there was so one cute? year I drew like a little ninja because I was really into Power Rangers. <laughs> but oh my God! I was a Power Ranger for Halloween once. I was too. The red one, but. That's all. That will do it for us this evening edition of TV2 News. As always, thank you for joining us. And be sure to connect with us on social media at TV2 Kent State Un KSU for continuous coverage on all things Kent State and Portage County. I'm Shane Triano. And I'm Chris Abreu. We're here every day at 6. We'll see you tomorrow. can make retirement happen. After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes! Sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20 mile radius. Home sweet home. You aced house hunter. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. <laughs>